Hey, Aria? Mm hmm Why did you do our makeup like this? Because I saw online this is how rockers look. This is how rockers look? Girl, I got to teach you about the greatest rocker of all time. You know who that is? Who? Eddie Van Halen. He was the bomb. And today, we're going to talk about his favorite pedal of all time. You know what? It didn't used to be a pedal. It used to be one of these big old honking rack machines. But now somebody made it so small that you can stick it on a pedal board. It's going to be awesome. You ready? Let's do this. Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello and welcome to this week's episode of What's This Button Do? I'm your host, Dustin. And as you saw from the intro this week, we're going to be talking some Eddie Van Halen. I learned a couple of things from that intro. One, I'm not sure I have the right makeup artist. No, she's actually pretty good. But yeah, I don't know where she got that whole goth look because this face does not do goth. Not my style. So, uh, uh, but having a little talk to Ari about Eddie Van Halen has been an absolute blast. Um, something has happened recently that I am super, super excited about. So I wanted to share it with you. Um, Boss recently announced that they were taking an old effects unit. Um, the SD3000, which was an old rack-mounted effects unit, um, and re-releasing it in pedal format, which I got super excited about that when I heard about it because I used to have one of those rack-mount units years and years ago. It was really cool. And a lot of artists like Van Halen and a lot of the rockers of the 80s had those units, but what they did is they took two of them, and they, they usually used them in stereo, and they would set them on the exact same settings a lot of times so that you would have this really cool echo on the left and on the right. And then sometimes they would change the settings on the like one side or the other so that you would hear this weird, crazy like delay sound over here and then a different delay sound over here. And you hear that a lot on, on uh, Van Halen's works, and especially um, back then they would use it to make a ping pong kind of sound where you'd have echo, 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 echo. So they'd just be off time just a little bit, which was a really, really cool effect. But what Boss wanted to do was make a pedal that could do that, but kind of capturing two of those in one box. So they created the SDE 3000 in a box, and it's actually two of those old rack mount units sandwiched together in one box. Now, I've seen a lot of chatter on the internet when they announced this pedal, and a lot of people were saying, man, the retail price is kind of high on this. It's $499 for one pedal, and the EVH version is $599. So these are not inexpensive pedals by any means. And a lot of people, when they announced it, said like a digital delay is not worth that. There is no way that, that anybody's going to pay that amount of money for this. But what I hope to show you by the end of this is that I know it's not for everybody and I know it is a kind of pricey pedal, but this is well worth every cent that they're charging. And I want to tell you why. Now, the first thing you heard me talk about is that really this is two delay pedals in one box. What they've done is given you a left and a right channel, and it is two full SDE 3001. So when you hit these little two buttons down here, you've got delay one, delay two. These are completely independent of each other if you set them up the right way, and you get two full delays. So it's really like sticking two delay pedals onto your pedal board. So two for the price of one. So if you consider that the EVH version is 600 bucks, you're really paying $300 of the delay, but you're buying two delays. But why would you want to buy two delays, you ask? Well, that is a great question. And the reason, not just for the Eddie Van Halen sound we were talking about a few seconds ago, the really cool part about this is Boss has gone above and beyond what the original programming of this was and created a pedal that allows those two delays to play off each other. And you can create all sorts of crazy effects and they make it super easy because they followed the exact same layout as all of the original buttons on the old rack mount units. What that means is, is you get this cool display up here, and you'll see it in a little bit when we dig into the pedal, but it actually allows you to dial in the exact numbers that you want, the exact second, the exact beats per minute that you want, and be able to recall those settings every single time, which allows you to do some neat soundscaping on the left and the right. They also added in a modification section that allows you to add like a little chorus and flange effect onto each side. They also have all sorts of phase reversals and cool effects. We'll dig a little bit into that, into the pedal, um, outside of what just you would see on like a boss demo. Um, but essentially what they've done is taken two delay pedals 
and link them together to allow them to play off of each other and always sound good together when you're using them rather than trying to have to sit there with two different delay pedals and dial them in each individually, which is a nightmare, let me tell you, if you've ever tried it. Same with setting up those old rack mount units. If you were trying to get that Eddie Van Halen sound with two of those, it was a flipping nightmare and would take hours of programming to get it right. You don't have to worry about any of that now. Now, the other part of this that is absolutely amazing outside of the sounds, we'll get into the sounds in a second, I promise we'll dig into it, um, is the input and output. And there is a difference between the regular version and the Eddie Van Halen version, and that's why there's a $100 difference to the pedal. The regular pedal has a stereo input and output, and uh, so you can run in just like you normally would if you're running in any normal stereo pedal from Boss or Strymon, anybody of those guys. Um, you just go left and right in, left and right out. But the Eddie Van Halen version takes that a step further because Eddie always ran a wet, dry, wet rig, which as anybody who follows my channel knows, I love wet, dry, wet. I think it is the greatest way to run a guitar. And essentially what that is, is you've got your delay, your reverb, any of your weird modulation sounds are going to the left and the right. And you have three amplifiers. You have a left amplifier, a right amplifier, and then a center amplifier. And usually that center amplifier is not getting any of the delays or reverbs. It's just a dry amplifier, maybe with a little bit of gain in it, but you're not putting all of your delay and reverb effects into there. Those are just on the left and right. And it creates this beautiful symphony of sounds. It's just a great, great, great sounding rig if you can, you can actually get yourself to be able to have three amps. But the beauty of this pedal is this is set up to do that on its own. So the Eddie Van Halen version, and I'll try to post a little picture of this as well so you see it, um, has stereo inputs and you don't have to run stereo. You can just run a mono single into here. And if you do that, then it also has an effect send. So you can actually send the signal back out of the pedal and stick in something else. Maybe you want to add your own chorus pedal or you want to add a, a drive pedal to make the the re, or the delay sound funky and, and, uh, and uh, driven. You can do that. It has a little special slot for that. I don't really use that yet. I haven't played much with it. But the most important thing to me is it has three outputs. Almost every other pedal I've ever seen either has one or two outputs. You never see a pedal with three actual individualized outputs. And what's cool is it's designed for wet, dry, wet. So you have a left output a right output and both of those get the delay signals but then the center the uh, uh, direct out is your center channel it does not get affected by this at all so it completely bypasses the entire rig and just sends your clean signal back out to your amplifier so essentially what you're doing is getting a secondary output box because right now when I run wet dry wet I was having to stick an extra stereo pedal somewhere in my loop and somewhere on my pedal board so that I could run out of it to my dry amp earlier in the signal chain before I got to all of my, my uh, reverbs and delays and all that kind of good stuff. So I had a, a Boss uh, EQ pedal that was a stereo pedal that I was just running uh, a cord out of straight into my dry amp. And it was in the middle of my pedal board. It was a pain in the rear. Plus, there were times that maybe I wanted some of the pedals that were after it to be on my center channel, and I couldn't do that because I had to have it come out earlier. Well, with this, you don't have to worry about that. You can run everything before you get to this pedal through your center amp, and then just split out just those stereo effects that you wanted to split out after this pedal. So it is a godsend for anybody who plays wet, dry, wet rigs. I think all of you who enjoy that sound are gonna love this. So what I thought I'd do today is I'll hop over. I'm not gonna go through every single sound on here. There's, there's some demos out there from Boss. I encourage you to go watch those. If you're an Eddie Van Halen fan, go watch their Eddie Van Halen demo because it walks you through all four of his sounds and what songs they use for it. It's really cool. Um, today, I wanna show you the interior features of this um, walk you through how to set it up because the guide that comes with it is terrible um, and then show you just a few of the sounds that they don't really talk about on their demos so you can hear why I like it so much and then we'll come back and talk about it. All right, we'll see you over the pedal board. All right, everybody. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a deep dive into this and I know there is no way in a 15 minute video I can show you a tenth of what this thing can do. So I want to show you why I think this is one of the best delay pedals ever made. And I, like I said, I've only had this for a week. 
I am so amazed at the new things that I find every single day. So I'm going to walk you some of those things that aren't really highlighted a lot in the uh, demos that are out there right now. So just wanted you to kind of be aware of all the cool things that you can do with this. So obviously digital delay, all based on the old rack mount unit from Boss. Um, but I want to dig into the menu system here so you can kind of hear how this works. So I'm going to give you my clean tone. We're just going to use my uh, trusty Starfighter you guys have seen before. But what we're doing a little different today is I'm using the full wet dry wet rig. So we're running out of three amps. So I've got a center channel and then a left and a right. That's gonna become important because of what I showed you with the plugins on the, the back of the device. So we're gonna be running this with a dry center channel and then we're gonna have uh, the delays on the left and the right hand side. So you're gonna hear both of those echoing through. So let's turn both delays on. Cool thing is again, you have two digital delays. You can run these in series or parallel so that they can you can have like one affecting the left side, one affecting the right side, or you can have them where both delays are happening together in both sides. So here it's got that pan delay. I've got that set up as a pan. I'm gonna just take it to one delay. We'll just turn it on delay one. See delay one. Just basically a slap back delay. And then I add in my pan delay. Now already you can hear what that does to the stereo image, how it widens things out. Kind of sounds like things are happening all around you. When you add gain, you can really hear it. But now, let me walk you through what you can do with this pedal, just so you can see some of the ins and outs. So, the the manual that comes with this is terrible it is just a quick start manual you have to if you get this pedal go online download the actual book it's like a hundred and some pages but i'm going to show you it is not as scary as it seems this is actually made to emulate the original system that they had on the rack mount unit so what's really cool is you've got your delay time your feedback your output, your rate, and your depth. And these are for modulations. You can actually add some really funky, like phasery and chorusy modulations that are really neat, but you don't have to use those. Um, but all of these tell you the numbers that are happening in real time so that you can adjust your parameters. And you've got a little dial here, so I can type down my, my uh, time that I wanna have the delays actually affecting. And you can hold down and you can see it'll change the numbers as I go through here. So it makes it really easy to A, dial in stuff, but B, for recall, if you're writing a song and I find this, I'm like, ooh. And I'm like, that, that's it, that's the time I want. All I have to do is just write down these numbers exactly, and then I can go back to that. I don't have to go through and save a new preset while I'm messing around. I can just jot down those numbers and be like, okay, cool. Now when I wanna come back, it's super easy to recall. It takes me no time to do whatsoever. That's just awesome. Now, when you first boot up the, the pedal, you'll see this. There's these left and right buttons up here. If you scroll through this, this will actually change this to beats per minute. So I know like this is in millisecond view. This is beats per minute. So that's a little bit easier, especially if you're using um, a drum or a click track and you know, okay, this song is in 128. I can just adjust this and up, or I can actually uh, take my tap tempo. I actually have it set on a different one right now. But uh, I can tap tempo into my song and change the beats per minute as I go through there. Um, so that's just a really handy little feature set. And then that's your where you've got the, the preset saved at is an R1. So that's in your very first one. You can also change your input level. So for the volume, I can drop this down. 50 is about unity. So if you've got a really hot signal or you want to bring it down because you're playing something low, you can bring this all the way down or you can even pump it for some extra gain in there and really is like a boost. I'm gonna crank it up to 100 here. 
Now, do I think you should do that? No. I don't like the, the distortion from that, but I could see there being a time for it. Maybe if you're using keyboards or drums or something into this and you want to crush them a little bit, you can. That's the cool thing about this is you can use this with a lot of different effects. So, but the thing that I did want you to see in there, when I play something, notice how all these boost up? That's actually a meter, so it's showing you if you're clipping. When you go above here, you're starting to clip. No clip. There I clipped a little bit, so my repeats are going to have a little bit of distortion on them. So it's really cool that it actually has a meter built into there. So really fun, like I said, super easy to modify, change what's happening here. But let's do a little deeper dive. So these buttons over here, these let you change the effect per delay. So you can come in here and say, I want to add a little bit of a filter. See how that just brightens it up a little bit? And I can tell it which delay I want to affect, delay one or delay two. So remember, delay one is my slap back, delay two is my long one. So I'm going to affect delay two. And maybe, let's change it and add times two. See how I kind of slowed it down a little bit? Kind of cool. Now, the other thing that's really neat is the feedback circuit in here. So the feedback circuit, that's how many repeats you're gonna have. So if I go way up here, up to 99, this is essentially going to be a oscillation. And it will repeat those repeats indefinitely. You notice it never gets like insano out of control. I like to keep it down right around the 30s and 40s, right in that area. But then you can also change the level that those repeats come in at. So you can make them a little bit louder. And again, Unity gains right at around 50. You can crank them so that they distort a little bit. Or you can bring them down and just have them as a nice kind of background. And it fades as it comes out over time. Now the other thing that you have is two phase buttons. These will allow you, especially when you're using a stereo rig, sometimes you'll have phasing issues. And this is really all about just listening and hearing your sound and you just decide which one's gonna sound the best for you. See how that thickened it up a little bit? Let's do the same thing with the feedback. Especially if I've got the feedback up a little bit. I think I like that right there. We'll just kind of do that, but you can use that to just modify the sound slightly, thicken it up. And really, I just encourage you to play with phase and just see which one sounds best. That'll really give you the best idea. And then the mod button is where it gets really funky. So the mod button is that chorusy, flangey kind of thing. So we've added the mod in there. You hear how wild that sounds? I've got it on 40 and 30 depth. Let's take it, we'll keep the rate at 40, but we're gonna drop the depth way down. Now see, it's going at the same pace, but it's much more subtle in there. It's just adding a little wave. What I like to do is drop the rate down a little bit, make it nice and slow, kind of like a vibrato, and then bring the depth up. And you can hear what it's doing. It's just kind of making a little swirly sound, thickening it up a little bit. See, just a fun swirly sound. But if you max these out, let's bring them way up. You can hear how wild this will get. You can get almost like rubber bandy. <laughs> really funky. And if you have the rate really high and the depth really low, bring this back down here.
See how cool that sounds? It's just a really funky, neat sound. Okay, so enough about that. Now let's jump into the setup here because for those of you who are getting this pedal and you've, you've clicked on this video and you want to see some things, I'm going to teach you a few quick setup things that are kind of a pain to go through the book and read and everything. So I'm just going to show you this real quick because it's super easy. So to set up the pedal the way that you want it, first thing you're going to do is, of course, click Setup. And you're going to see a menu system. Now, depth and time are the key buttons when you're navigating this menu system. Time will take you through all these different parameters that you want to have here. And then the setup button will select the one. So we're going to start with just system because this is really important. First thing you do is you go to system, you hit setup. And then what you will see is for the foot switches here, you can set it to two modes, manual or memory. I like manual because manual allows you to turn on each of these independently. If you have it in memory, what it's going to do is when you save a preset, it's recording both delay one and delay two on at the same time and will just save that as a preset. If you have it set up as manual, when you go into preset one, it's got both of those set up, but you can turn them off independently. So if I don't want that slap back, I can turn it off and just have delay two. I like that more. I think it's more functional. It's a little bit more foot stompy, but to me, that's a lot more versatile for what you can do. So I love setting it up there. So then once I've got that set up, I just exit out of the system and then I'm back to here. Now, I want to show you a couple of the other features that nobody has been talking about, and I think they're so important. So the other things that you can do in here, you can set up MIDI, of course. You can map that. I'm not going to really mess with that today. I'm going to scroll down a little bit, and I'm going to show you a couple of really fun things in here. So this NS is something that not a lot of people are talking about. But what it is, is a noise suppressor. So this becomes very important when you're using gain. I'm going to turn on a gain pedal real quick. Instantly, you hear, just without me playing at all, there's the natural gain nastiness, right? So with the noise suppressor, you can turn that on, and then you press the up button on the time, and it'll take you to the threshold. Right now, the threshold is set at 30. So I'm going to play you just a chord. Very cool, but as this fades down, you're going to hear that distortion coming back, right? You can still hear that annoying buzz. Watch what happens when I raise the threshold up. That is a built-in noise gate. Now, the only noise that you're still hear hearing is from the center channel amp because it is the completely dry amp. If I turn it to standby, then boom, you see, everything goes away. Now it's just a clean, crisp signal. So the, the left and the right channels are completely quiet with this threshold set to 100, but watch what happens when I play. That is not affecting my clean signal at all. And see, even the threshold's at 100, it still fades out naturally, and that's all controlled by the release. As long as you keep the release down a little ways, instead of doing it at 100, it won't just cut off. It's not just going to drop out. So it allows that signal to keep going. And I can crank the depth up here. You'll see, if I crank the depth all the way to 100 and have it actually do a 100 release... It's still letting it go. It's still ringing out as we play through. So it, it is a really nice noise gate in that it doesn't do that weird hard cutoff mode that you see in so many different things where it just makes your sound sound terrible or like the second that things get a little quiet, it just hard cuts off and it sounds not natural. This is the most natural noise gate I have ever seen built into a pedal. And to me, I mean, that in and of itself is worth the price of admission beyond the, the wet dry wet reg, uh, I just think you basically are getting a boss noise suppressor, two digital delays, and a wet dry wet setup rig for 500 bucks. So really when you think about the price of the pedal, even though it is a more expensive boss pedal, this is not an insane price for what you're getting for all the features and benefits that are in here. It is absolutely insane. So I love that. I just wanted you guys to see that because I think that is a feature that not a lot of people are talking about, but I think it is so, so important. 
The other cool thing about this is you can also, if you come down here to the master section, you can actually change the structure of these so that you can run the delays in series and in parallel. You can really change things up. You can change the level that each of those runs at, and you can even give each individual delay its own output level so you can change the, the levels that they're running at. You can also change your input output settings. So if you're coming into the pedal stereo or you're wanting the output to go, maybe you want your output to not just be a stereo. Maybe you want only one effect to go to one side, one effect to go to the other side, and you wanna have the dry going or you don't wanna have the dry going. You can go in there and change all of those parameters in here. So from a, a creative standpoint and from a designer's dream, you can do so much with this in changing the sounds out. It is, it is absolutely insane. All right, what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna show you a few of the sound samples on here. Like I said, there's tons of examples of these out here. I wanted you to see the menus and the versatility of this more than I wanted you to hear the sounds. But I mean, let's face it, you're gonna wanna hear some of the cool sounds. So let's just hit a few of these things. I'm not gonna play you EVH songs because I want this to actually be able to be heard and not you know YouTube to shut it down because I violated copyright. Um, but I am gonna show you a few of the settings that are on here for the EVH side. So first of all, what I already have. Just a killer, killer delay sound. All right, so now we can't. We would be remiss if we didn't look at the EVH sounds. Um, so they have four presets from Eddie's unit. Now you can hear the noise gate went away when I switched over to this, um, but I'm gonna show you a few of the sounds. Number one, number two. All right, number three is really cool because number three is kind of a slapbacky funkiness. Um, really similar. I just love that sound. Plus it's really great with squeals, it just sounds awesome. And then number four. Okay, I hope that gave you a good idea of some of the amazing sounds that you can get from this new pedal. So what's the verdict? Well. Let's talk about the pros first. First of all, the input jack system and the way that it has a wet dry wet rig feature built into it means if you're running a wet dry wet rig, I think this pedal is worth every single penny. I, I think it's a must have and it is going on my board permanently. There is nothing else like it on the market that has that kind of input system. It even comes with special grounding jacks that you can plug in in between your uh, instrument cable and the pedal itself to make sure that each single jack that you're going into is isolated so you can eliminate ground hum just through the pedal. What they've done to think this out is just tremendous and, and well worth it if you're running a wet dry rig or even just a stereo rig. I think it's absolutely worth the money. Um, Two, the sounds. The sound quality is absolutely amazing. This is one of the best delays on the market, and the fact that you can get two delays running in parallel series, you can do a lot of creative stuff here. Um, I think it absolutely top quality. 
And as a side note, the noise gate itself, again, I think that is one of the best noise gates I've ever heard. And most noise gate pedals are going to cost you 100 to 200 bucks. So just the fact that you get that thrown in makes it a tremendous, tremendous value. Um, yeah, absolutely love it. And then finally, the last pro I think for this is the easy recall. I love that display screen. I love that you can take note of exactly the settings that you have. And even as you start watching some of these demos, if you look back to the beginning of this demo, um, before I started getting into the presets, you saw all of my settings and where I was dialed into. So if you heard a sound that you really liked, you could just easily recall that on your own. I think that's gonna be huge. And I think for pedal demos uh, in the future, as you start looking these up online, you're gonna be able to make the same sounds that you see people online making. That's a huge thing. It's really hard to dial those in with dials, but when you've got digital displays like that, top notch. So why wouldn't you wanna buy this? Well, I think the first obvious con is, is if you're not running a stereo rig or you're not running a wet dry wet rig, 90% of the features in this pedal are gonna be useless to you. A lot of the magic of this pedal is in the stereo delay sounds. It's a great delay pedal on its own, don't get me wrong, but for five to $600, I'm not sure I would ever really want this pedal if I could just get another delay pedal for a couple hundred bucks, Boss makes some other amazing delays. If you're not running stereo, I really probably would not go for this one. I just don't think it's going to be uh, the best bang for your buck, if that's fair. Unless you're just a huge EVH fan and, and you want to get his exact delay sounds, you're still not going to really be able to recall it without doing the wet, dry, wet rig like he does. So I think that's going to be your biggest problem there. Um... I would say another con is you can't fully edit those EVH presets. Um, they're kind of there to give you what Eddie was playing. So I really wish they would have let you really deep, deep dive in, edit it, copy it, and start tweaking them for yourselves. Maybe they'll have that in a patch later on, um, but it, it's definitely one of the things. And then three, I think the biggest con to this pedal is just the price. Uh, this is going to be a tough pill to swallow for a lot of people coming in at $499 to $599 uh, USD. That's an expensive boss pedal. That's really an expensive pedal, period. Now, granted, you are getting two separate delay pedals, a noise gate, and a ton of extra features in here. So I do believe that it's worth the price. I think the price is there, but I do know that for a lot of people, that's gonna be really hard to justify and it's just not gonna be budget friendly. So that's really the only cons. But with all that said, what do we rate this pedal? I'm gonna say for anybody who has a stereo reg, this is a five-star pedal, hands down. Uh, out of five stars, definitely a five-star pedal. I would buy this in a heartbeat again uh, if I had to. Um, for those who are running a regular rig, um, I would probably rate this a two to three star pedal. The sounds are amazing. I just think it's going to have a feature set that would be too much for what you wanna have. But if you wanna have a future-proof pedal that you're gonna be able to use for years to come, I really do think this is a great bang for your buck. Well, thank you all for coming out today. We really appreciate you visiting. Next week, we're going to be taking a look at a very, very special guitar. So I hope you'll join me back for that to take a look. Thank you all. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you soon.